Let's just still our hearts for a moment. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, would you open our ears so that we may hear your voice and open our minds so that we may receive your internal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance and open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome. It's lovely to be here. I'm going to start with a, a little story first. So just before Christmas, I met up with a friend for a coffee. I was feeling quite pleased myself, as I'd seen a couple of months before, the perfect gift for her. My friend likes Polish pottery, like the one on the picture, and actually that's her teapot. She always offers tea or coffee in her Polish pottery with the pottery mugs, the creamer, and the sugar bowl. Well, I found a Polish pottery teapot warmer, didn't know they existed, in the same design as her pot, and the design's called Doodle. And this is the actual teapot holder. She took a photo for me. But, so I wrapped this up just before Christmas, and I kind of sat on it for a while, and then we met up. But as we were saying our farewells, I took this gift out of my bag and I presented it to her. And I said, don't open it till Christmas. But then I clocked the look of embarrassment and mild panic on her face as she blurted out, sorry, but I've left yours at home. Can I pop it in over Christmas? She was absolutely mortified for the simple reason that she had nothing to give in return. We often have this desire to return the favor, to be generous to those who are generous towards us, sometimes even if we don't like them that much, or sometimes our generosity may come with the limits. But if we're always inviting back the people who invited us, what does this mean for those who have fallen on hard times or who find themselves isolated from us as their family and friends. Christians Against Poverty, CAP for short, partners with churches to equip and empower them to serve those who otherwise might be overlooked and provide life-changing practical support. My name is Fiona and I have the absolute privilege of working with CAP to help people here in East Grinstead in our community. Today I want to talk about Jesus' approach to generosity, his instructions on how to host a feast. And I'm going to read from Luke 14, and it's two verses I'm homing in on, verses 12 to 14. But to set the scene, Jesus is dining at the house of an important Pharisee. This guy has invited all his friends. They all know the pecking order, and they've all jostled for the best places at the table. The Pharisees' culture was to invite the important people, those who could reciprocate and maybe help them on the social ladder. But Jesus tears this idea apart. He turns around and embarrassingly tells the Pharisee in front of all his friends how he ought to have organized the party. Then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. When Jesus refers to a dinner here, he's talking about more than just a physical meal. It's code for the kingdom of God. He's making his point about the way that God's kingdom works, the way God's love works. You see, there's a human way of loving which is always keeping count. And there's a God way of loving which is relentlessly generous. Let me say that again. There's a human way of loving, which is always keeping count. And there's a God way of loving, which is relentlessly generous. 
This is the love we see in Jesus. That is the love he's talking about here. Jesus' point is that you can't find your way to the heavenly table with sharp elbows and social climbing. You can't assume it because of your behavior or heritage. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, is a free gift that none of us deserve. And no one can repay. And everyone, especially the poorest, are welcome to the heavenly table. So if God is relentlessly generous in his love to us, how should we respond? Obviously, we can and should love him back. But what we are compelled to do from Jesus' teachings is to love others. To join him in a life of generosity, especially to those who find themselves struggling, isolated and overlooked. It is what flows out of the heart of the gospel. I'm sure to some extent you've experienced isolation or challenges from the events of the past two years. I certainly have. The hard truth is that for those living in poverty, this isolation was often their everyday experience before the pandemic. But without the Zoom quizzes and the family updates, because we still have a number of families who have no access to the internet, don't have a smartphone, and so they still live in this isolation. And a recent survey of those helped by CAP found that before receiving help, 75% had experienced loneliness or so so social isolation due to their circumstances. As part of my CAP role as a debt coach, I go visit people in their homes. And you know, we often meet people who say, I don't meet with my family or friends, just in case they ask how I am. And I can't hide that something is wrong. I'd be so embarrassed if they found out I was in debt. Every story we hear carries the burden of shame, isolation, and fear that weighs people down. But what I love about CAP is that it does enable local churches like us here at Trinity to provide families and individuals with life-changing practical support, as well as an invitation into their local church community, just like the Welcome Cafe each day of the week. So what does this mean in practice for those we help? I'm going to introduce you to Simon. He's an amazing chap who turned his life around with the support of CAP. So he's going to tell you his story. My um, now deceased wife uh, used to look after the finances. Uh, she was the one that was good with the money where I wasn't and I'd built up quite a lot of severe debt, unmanageable debt. So I was living in fear of eviction. I'd been served with an eviction notice from my landlords. I didn't see a way forward, I didn't see a way out of it. Um, so I decided, or I just tried to end it all. It was actually my landlords who'd mentioned Christians Against Poverty. They fast-tracked me and my debt coach, Jim, arrived in my doorstep. Nobody had crossed the threshold. Um, I'd been living there, I think I'd been there nearly two years. So the biggest difference that Christians Against Poverty's process made for me was that it was house visits. By the July of 2016, I got that wonderful telephone call from headquarters at CAP where they said, Mr. Moss, you are now debt free and played the harmonicas. And that's one of the greatest sounds I've ever heard. I then um, went on a cap event where I came to faith. This lady put her hands on my, on my shoulder and prayed for me. 
just felt an overwhelming sense of calm and peace and love and warmth that I've never experienced before. And I just knew, I just knew that what it was and committed my life to Jesus there and then. On a Sunday, I can't wait to get up for service. I just love the church family that I've got. We're brothers and sisters in Christ, but we're, we're closer than blood. Um, and we support each other. We live our lives for each other. We're there for each other. And I praise God and thank God for that day that I now know he watched over me when I tried to end it all. And he said, no, mate, you're not going yet. You've got lots to do. I just felt such um, an overwhelming sense of wanting to give something back. It's turned my life around 180 degrees, um, completely structureless to you know, having a real purpose in life now. Both of my sons in conversation saw the difference that coming to faith had made to me. Daz came up first, he was in minor crime, so he'd been in and out of prison. Anyway, he came to the service, sat at the back, listened intently. We happened to be having that evening some baptisms in Newcastle, so he chose to come along and get baptised, and I would never felt so proud in all my life. It was the proudest moment. Sorry. <sighs> Obviously it was a tragic situation for us, for the family, but the blessings for me personally is that he's found Jesus and he's taken, been taken to glory um, with his maker and he's sat up there and he's looking down on us and I'm sure he's proud of what his dad's doing. Life can still be uh, tough but I know that I've always got my church family around me to support me and I know that I've always got Jesus as my best friend. And as it says, my superhero. <laughs>
But si this si the Simon story is a heart-rending story, and if this resonates with you and your circumstances, then I would strongly encourage you to not put off seeking help. You can call CAP for free on 0800 328 0006. For Simon, contacting CAP was the moment his story changed. Just let me explain how CAP works. When someone reaches out to CAP for help, one thing we don't do is we do not pay their debts off. But what we do do is myself and a befriender will go into the home of that family or that client and we will visit them and we will come alongside them and we will get together and gather all their paperwork and this, this then gets sent up to head office in Bradford where we have an army of expert debt advisors and these teams work out with that person to identify the best route out of debt and make a sustainable budget for them and it could be a repayment or a form of insolvency. But what CAP do is that they negotiate with creditors on their behalf. And that's the beauty, I think, of CAP, that they do this. And then we journey with them for however long it takes to see them become debt free. With debt management plans, it could be up to five years. So we're four years now with some of our clients. We're still with them. Those that go through insolvency, it can take months. Um, but yeah, we get there in the end with them. But every year, over 2,000 people experience the joy of becoming debt-free, and we do celebrate with them. Hundreds more step into employment after having been equipped through the CAP job clubs, or learn valuable skills to navigate life on a low income through the CAP life skills. Thousands are able to develop their budgeting skills and prevent debt through the CAP money course, of course, which is what we offer here. Everything CAP does is about giving the church a hands-on way to love people and connect with those we might not easily come into contact with. So I'm going to plug our next CAP money course here. It's not physically here. It will be on Zoom, and that starts on the 9th of February and we'll run for three consecutive Wednesdays starting at 7.45. And I have to say, if you haven't done it, then think about signing up. It's for absolutely everyone. And the beauty of it is that you will get an online budgeting tool, which you can dip in and out. I constantly do it when, when things change. Um, it's just great. It will help you get better money management skills to help you spend wisely save and prevent debt. It's the proactive educational arm <clears throat> of CAP. Uh, it's, a, it's the one thing I started off doing. I became a debt, not a debt, a money coach first. I signed up, I went down to Brighton, and I did that. I came back, and uh, Ralph was here, and I said, Ralph, we can do more than a money course. Let's, uh, what about a debt centre? And I had absolutely no idea back then in 2017 what it meant. But you know what? It's tough. It really is tough. And boy, do I cry with our clients. But you know, there's celebrations as well to be had. I absolutely do love what I do because I work with the Lord each and every day. We do this together. I'm not alone. I'm not on my own. I cannot do this in my own strength. But we do this together. You know, for Simon, as he was filled with the love and generosity of Jesus through CAP and the local church, as he saw his life turned around 180 degrees, that generosity actually started to overflow into the lives of those around him. He went from being isolated to being a source of community and hope to his friends and family doing exactly what Jesus tells us to do in Luke 14. What an example to follow. This is the power of generosity in action, because one person and one church cared enough to reach out and reach not just Simon, but through him, his whole family, and many others besides have been impacted we often have no idea of the impact and significance of our generosity. 
Today marks our fourth anniversary as the East Grinsley Cap Debt Centre, and we celebrate all that God has and is doing here. We give praise for the 13 families who have gone debt free. We pray for all the 56 families that we have met through first appointments. And we continue to pray for the 11 families we are currently supporting. CAP is about ordinary people in all kinds of churches making that choice. I wonder what that looks like for you. Perhaps you know of someone like Simon that you could reach out today. Perhaps you've been inspired by Simon and the work of CAP. As a partner church, our contribution covers about one third of the cost of the actual debt counseling. Most of the remaining two thirds come from over 29,000 people across the country. And we call them life changers because their generosity above and beyond their church giving and often inspired by their faith is quite literally changing people's lives. As without them, none of what I've shared with you this morning would be possible. Now, some of you may already be life changers and that's great. Please keep on giving. However, I am going to ask, would you join us here as the East Grinstead Transformers to give five pounds a month for us to keep doing the Lord's work. I have Trinity forms for this, so please find me after if you wish to make a donation, a one-off or regular. But of course, it's not just financial. There's other ways in which you can help. You know there's your time. Join our befriending team. Join our event team. I'm hoping that we will be able to put on a cat client event this year. Unfortunately, Christmas got um, cancelled due to the uh, changes and increases of COVID. And I'd like to think we can put a summer, on, a summer one on. But the one thing we actually really need is prayer warriors. I want to create a closed WhatsApp group whereby I will put out a prayer request, keeping the family or individual anonymous, knowing that they will be held in prayer. You know, lives are complicated. People in debt, there's complications. You know, when we come alongside them and we're getting to know them, you know, that is just the tip of this iceberg and there's all this going on underneath. So I really, really want this prayer WhatsApp group to start so I can put it out there. I don't want, don't expect a response back, but it's just holding people in prayer. So do come and see me if you're interested in that. But I'm just going to recap. So when you give a banquet, Jesus says, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Powerful, challenging words. We are all invited to God's table and he doesn't just invite us once or twice. He perseveres. He pursues us. Through Jesus, we are invited to be at his table forever. And so by his spirit, may we learn to follow his example and instruction, living generously towards those who can't repay us, just as he is generous towards us, who could never repay him. I just want us to listen to a song that's written and composed by Jono, who is a debt centre manager. And this song has been, it's been inspired by his many clients. Now let's really listen to the words and allow everything that you've heard this morning just soak in. Just want to thank you for your time this morning. God. 
gospel's for the weary, the gospel's for the weak, the gospel's for the lonely and those sleeping on the streets. It's the news that Jesus loves you and that he knows your name. He died and rose in power and he's coming back again. that 